Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Hello and welcome to Footy Judge Mo, people. Finally, the Premier League is back. It's, I think, about 18 hours until we see the first game tomorrow. I can't wait. I actually keep talking about the Arsenal and Man City game as it's tomorrow. That's how much I cannot wait. Big up everybody that joined us now. We're going to aim for a great show for you guys. We'll talk about Arsenal and Man City, of course. Liverpool, the Derby is going to beat them and then coach them probably next season. Jurgen Klopp has not beaten Brighton when the Derby has been the coach. We'll talk about Chelsea a little bit. And can they actually get Europe next season with Chelsea, of course? But I'm here with the great guys, of course. So, guys, the first thing you do is you like the video because my target every video is to get 300 to 400 likes live and then get 500 likes after. So if you're watching this now, you have to hit that like button. If you're watching this on the replay, like the video before you continue because we're in for a great, great show. But welcome. How is everybody feeling? Nobbins? Nervous? Not nervous? How are you feeling? Yeah. Um, um, I'm, I'm, as I'm sure we'll discuss, title defining game for all three horses in this proverbial and literal race um yeah I, I, as as nervous as i think i should be and as we'll get into like, a, there is an element of me which hasn't given up isn't the right expression but yeah i i don't even know what i mean we'll get into it, i'm sure how are you rory how are you feeling I'm good. I'm good. I'm excited. I feel like there's not as much pressure on us for this game as maybe there definitely there was last season. So yeah, I'm just excited for it. I'm just buzzing for the football, to be honest. We've just got like we've just got like seven or eight weeks of just just pure football madness now. So absolutely. Listen. Jamie, how are you doing? How are you feeling after yesterday's news? Um, I know you, there's a tweet that you put out. Yeah. And uh we'll talk about it. But yeah, how are you feeling? Feel uh, apart from the heartburn, I'm all right. <laughs> I'm, I'm all right. I'm not too bad, actually. I'm yeah. quite comfortable as a Liverpool fan. You know, some people cry babies, but I'm good. Yeah, Chess, how are you doing, man? Good to have you here with us. How are you? Yeah, obviously my team's not part of this race, but, you know, give my mid-table Are your team can actually decide the race, though? Yeah, yeah, a little bit, but, you know... I'll let, I'll, let, I'll let you know Arsenal man City you play you me. play uh you, you still play Arsenal only right just two fair the only two players Arsenal play City in the cup so yeah, that besides yeah. their treble then yes yeah, but... you can start you can stop the treble big up everybody you know what to do we'll stop in the middle we'll do all your super chats if you want to get your questions in your comments if you want to interject a point and I actually want to start with actually um before we start with the big game I actually want to start with the with, with the news about Alonso and Liverpool. The news came out yesterday. How does that affect Liverpool the rest of the season? That all the media were talking about Alonso is this, Alonso is that. How does that affect Liverpool's uh, coming games? Uh, it, it shouldn't affect them whatsoever. I mean, Klopp saying he's leaving hasn't affected them so far, so this news shouldn't affect them. Yeah, probably affect the fan base. You know, the fan base wanted Alonso and now they're all pretending they didn't. You know, that's what Liverpool fans do. Um, but it, if it affects the players, I'll be shocked, man. Because as I said, it hasn't affected them clock leaving. So, yeah, the, the players should be just professional. The team should be professional and just carry on. The club should will be as different decision. than what was that, what is going to happen. Should be, but let's see what happens. I, I want to see how the club react after the Man United loss in the FA Cup. That's what I'm more concerned about. That's what I want to see, how they perform after that. Because, you know, Liverpool gone, you know, a lot of this season without losing many games in any of the competitions that we've been in. So that loss against May United before the international break, I want to see how the players re play like after that result more than the Salonzo stuff, to be fair. But that's that's just me. Does anybody else, like, see Liverpool actually, this news affecting Liverpool at all? Not massively, I don't think. No. Not not for the, not for this season. The only thing I can think is that maybe it puts a little bit more pressure on because I think they're they're less likely to have success next season um, if they don't get Alonso. So maybe, but again, I think that's maybe more of a fan thing in terms of the fans might feel a bit more stressed about winning something this season. But I can't imagine it would affect the players. Like unless you were unless as a player you were so. Uh, 
uh, like dead set on Alonso and you were only going to stay for Alonso, that now you think you're going to leave in the summer, then that's the only way I could really think it would affect them. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter. For me, to be honest, I think actually the players read the news, the players read social media, the players will know by now that Alonso's not coming, the players will start asking the questions. Listen, the players will, will need to know who's going to coach them next season. I know that a lot of people say they are professionals, they're not professionals and all this stuff. But the definitely players ask about their future. A lot of people say, who's going to be my coach next season? You didn't think the player after the game is sitting with oh, their agents and asking, who do you think is going to be Liverpool? Who do you think is going to manage me next season? Omar, How do you think is, that affects my future? I'm sure they do. To, to, be, to be fair, though, they would have had these concerns before the confirmation he wasn't joining, right? So they would have said to their agents or had these discussions beforehand anyway. So... Alonso confirming that he's not joining doesn't really change their mentality too much. Maybe it shifts it a little bit in terms of a bit more uneasy in who's coming in. Maybe they don't fancy hammering three at the back. Maybe the style of football, etc. But in terms of like professional standpoint, I'll probably just assume there'd be similar kind of char characteristics and playing style going forward. I can't see a massive drop off because of this news in particular. But Klopp in general leaving, of course, that's going to be loads of pressure on their season. Jamie will tell you that. But yeah, I don't think Alonso confirming it does too much. Just my opinion, anyway. <clears throat> no, Benza, I wanted to ask you something about this this uh, the Zerbi thing. They're playing the Zerbi um, on Sunday before your game. He's pressure on Liverpool to win the game. He hasn't won against uh, uh, Klopp hasn't won against the Zerbi before. Do you see Brighton getting anything out of this game? No. no. If I'm being very very frank and blunt. Um, no, it's if it was in Brighton, I'd, I'd be interested, uh, but it's at Anfield, so I'm not. Uh, I, I don't know exactly what Liverpool's injury situation is, but I think that you know p people are coming back or are back already. It's not like you know it's it's like a the the, the team which just about was it Brentford away I think it was or, or was it Bournemouth away I don't I, I don't know who it was relatively recently or Forest away it was someone that they beat in like the last minute uh, and right. it was like you know. Forest, thank you. And that, that had a lot of academy kids uh, in in the in the side. It's not that this is a very different Liverpool side now. Um, yeah, it, it, sadly, it'll be too much for Brighton. I'm afraid to say. I'd, I'd love it if they did something, you know, deserve be auditioning for a job as the Klopp replacement. Uh, but no, I, I I I can't see anything other than a relatively comfortable uh, Liverpool win. Anybody? Are you that confident, Jamie? Um. I'm confident at home. I think Liverpool will go win all their home games this season. So uh, uh, so I'm pretty confident for that. But look, Brighton, my only worry is, and I always say this as a Liverpool fan, is that when Liverpool have a bit of a gap, a bit of a break, they don't usually come back as strong. They, it takes them a little while. Um, so I think we'll win the game. I just don't think it'll be like a... It might be a little bit uncomfortable at times. We might not have the greatest performance, but get the three points. And that, to be fair, I only care about three points right now. That's all that matters. I don't care about performances right now. Just get the W, and that's all that matters, really. I, I think Liverpool, it, it's going to be a tough game. I think you win it just because it's home. <laughs> I think yeah. you put pressure on Arsenal and Manchester City without exactly. a shadow of a doubt. Uh, but I, I, I'm not, I think Liverpool have the easiest run of all of them. However, I'm I'm thinking there's too the problem with Liverpool football club is there's so much noise around the club every week, every day. There's so much noise Stretch. about this managerial change. There's so much noise about Salah leaving. Now there's the noise about Trent and Real Madrid and all this stuff. There's so much noise around Liverpool that actually I believe it puts some pressure on the players. People think that players don't read social media. I guarantee you, their friends tell them, their family tell them, their cousins tell them. They they tell them what is being said. In the media, I know there's pressure on Arsenal about winning, and we'll come to that. But I believe there is some pressure on Liverpool, to be honest, from the media, from the noise around him, from the what Klopp like announced that he's leaving. I believe that's that's so much noise around mm. Liverpool. It helps that you don't play Champions League; it it really helps. But I, I believe there's so much noise that it will cause a little bit of disruption. It hasn't, but I think in the first in the first drop, this is will I think it might be a dominant effect. I think we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but I believe Liverpool, it should be a straightforward for them against Brighton because Brighton will not sit deep and Nunes and Salah will have all the spaces around in the world to yeah, so the transition. 
And Salah, you know, Klopp saying Salah's fully fit now. Darwin's good. Yeah, you look at Trent being back for the, and Jota being back for the Man United game. So Curtis Jones should be back next week or so. So yeah, the, the team's getting stronger. A lot of our big players have had rest as well, especially Salah and Darwin. They didn't go in their international team. So yeah. they've had good rest for us. So and they're going to be important, them two players, for the rest of the season. Very important, especially Mo. You know, yeah. so, yeah, I'm quite, I'm quite excited by it. Before we go on to the big game, I wanted to touch on Chelsea since we have Chelsea here. It's very rare to see our Chelsea <laughs> fans nowadays. Uh, <laughs> this, this notion that the FFP problems and all this stuff and some of the players and the squad and all the noise about uh, Lavia and the injuries and stuff like this. What can Pochettino do to grant him another year, in your opinion? Mm, I do think he's gone past that point. I think the whole fan base, I, I, I'll be honest with you, man. I think most of the fan base, even the ones on the rational, would say he's gone past the point <laughs> of a time. But I think if you to, to answer the question, maybe Europe. If he was to maybe get to a final of FA Cup, maybe that like get top seven, maybe top, I think top eight, maybe makes Europe as well this season. Maybe, but that's a push. And if Chelsea fans had the same same standards I do, you know, like then that isn't enough in itself. So to be honest with you, I'm gonna say no to your question in general. He doesn't really can do anything this season, I'll be honest. Nothing. I mean, is he gonna win the FA Cup? Numbers would probably tell you no. You know what I'm saying? So could they got players the semi-final? I'm going to the game, so I'll probably lose it again. Already had one final this year. Who are you playing the semi-final? City oh, okay. <laughs> at Wembley. I went to Liverpool game and I'm going to Man City game stupidly. I'm going to face two hours in the season. I know I am. And there's no way nobody's going to sit and tell me, oh, we're not going to win because we drew against you twice. They're going to beat us. Okay. I'm just going for the vibes. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, to be honest with you, I don't know what everybody else thinks, but for me, I don't know what you can do. Can you get sit? Nope. Can you get fourth? Obviously not. Can you get mid table? Yes. Is he going to win a trophy? No. So what's he really done here, really, this season? <laughs> you tell me. You're laughing, but you tell me. What's he done? I they don't tell me about the club and about the transfer policy. And I'm talking about him as a as a manager, his job on his own. Because I've always said, and people talk to me in the streams about management and stuff, in jobs when your manager's on his phone or your colleagues aren't doing work, does that mean that you don't have to do work too to a poor standard? Do you not have your own pride and your own like level of accountability, right? Your own self like worth and strive for something. So if the team is playing badly and the management is a bit poor, that doesn't mean that Potts could get like alleviated all blame, and it's not his fault. So if we're 11th position, I see him make poor decisions, play chill at left wing, poor subs, poor tactics like in the final, sitting back against who do you bring on the bench, Jamie? Like Doak and them, man. I don't know who the heck you brought on, right? You're telling me that's not his fault too. So for me, no, he can't return it. But interesting. The, uh, well, the issue is, I kind of agree, but then you look at like the managerial landscape, especially now that Alonso's staying. It's like who do you who do you go and get? Because Liverpool are going to beat you to whoever's the, the next best option, and then Bayern potentially looking for a manager as well, who again would beat you to the next best option. So it's like, who's available? Mourinho. Uh, I honestly think they'll go I'd for I'd love it. Guy. In big 2024, Rory, Jose back. Mourinho. Yeah. In I big 2024. I actually believe they can actually poach Amram. <coughs> if well, Liverpool, Liverpool don't go for Amram, I think they get Amram. But why wouldn't Liverpool go for him, though? Why would Liverpool go for him? What's, I mean, what did else? this guy do Because it's that for Liverpool to go for him? Because he's Portuguese. Is that, is that, is that because he won, he won the league with Sporting Lisbon. Like... Why are Liverpool like like some of them are like talking about I know Tom Little talking about Amazon? You know He's the revolutionary why, coach around the world. And I'm like, yes, he has won the league, but I've seen him beat by Gasparini at Atalanta. Like I I haven't watched enough you know of Sporting Lisbon to be honest. Saying, He's not Ancelotti, bro. But you know what it is, bro? Do you know why they're saying I don't know if Jamie will tell you he's a Liverpool fan, isn't it? I think they're saying Amarin so much because he's the only manager, yeah, who's actually won something. And because oh, Klopp yeah. is in a successful period, they don't want to have a drop-off. They don't believe they need to have a drop-off. So their narrative will be, let's get a manager who's won it 
and continue that kind of train movement. Whereas I think Chelsea would go for the Zerbi because you have a relationship with Brighton. We're just we're, we're you're going to ruin team. another brilliant Brighton manager. You're going to exactly. make me really angry again. I'm still not forgiving you for you again. To Potter. I'm calling it now. Come back to me in summer. I'm calling it now. We're going to get the Zerbi. They'll get Amarin, and um, yeah. I think you, someone. You, go ahead. Go ahead, Rory. Go ahead. I think someone might go late for Nagelsmann after the Euros. That could be Liverpool something should get him. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, but Liverpool. I assume Liverpool want someone at, like straight at the start of the summer. I don't mm. know. Who's, yeah, who's or... Liverpool better, a Zerbi or Amarin? Oh Jesus Christ! Um, I just uh, would love to see Zerbi just for Hassan. To be honest. Uh, uh, part of me would like to see Deserby for the vibes, and I'm a Liverpool man fan, right? Because I just, I, I just like to see the breakdown of humanity. That's what I, you know, it just go everyone going crazy and nuts. Because I, I don't live in like people are just, you know, people are like Alonso or nothing. And I'm like, he's just mad. Like, do you hear yourselves when you say this crap? It's it, it, it don't make no sense. But if I look at Almerin, uh, there's there's things I like about his game, and you know, he's been successful. Didn't he win the cup with Boa Vista as well? Both Praga. Yeah. So he's a, he's a he's obviously a good coach. Is he, what is he? Thirty nine. I know he's young. He's very he? good. He's very good coach. Yeah. He's very good coach. So he's probably, if I'm looking at it right now, I'd probably I would like he would someone I would like. And if I look at the way Liverpool run as a football club, and what he's like as a manager and a coach, it probably is a quite a nice fit. Mm. Um. Deserby, I think Deserby's a good coach. You know what it is? I think it's just this season everyone's gone off him. If we all said this last season, I think a lot of Liverpool fans would be up for it because how well we did. But this season, because he's gone off it a little bit because, unfortunately, he lost McAllister and Casado. You know, it's got, his team's not going to be as good as last season. But it's not like he's doing a terrible job with Brighton. I just don't think... I, I just don't think a lot of people trust him to be the right man. So... Yeah, I, I'd look at Almerin probably, and I think now reading, you know, Fabrizio's tweets and some Liverpool journalist tweets today, that that looks like that's going to be stepped up now quite quickly. So, because Liverpool want to get it done by the end of April, so they're not hanging about now. So, I think I think that will be the case. I think Ruben Almerin will be the new Liverpool manager, but I'm excited by that. I'm excited by that future. I'm excited by you know maybe a different formation, a different system. You know, I'm excited by the future, but. I'd be I'd be all right if it was Deserby. I would give him my look. The one thing I don't want is Liverpool fans get worked up that what manager they want, all right? And they don't get the manager they want, so they don't give the new manager time, and they put this negative atmosphere into the into the air. Even if it's Deserby, he might not be the man I want, but I give him the benefit of, of for time and to see what it does because he might cook, he might do really well. We just don't know. I, I don't know the future. So that's one thing we've got to do as Liverpool fans because Klopp is leaving. You know, whoever we go get in is a downgrade. You know, it's just, it's the way it is. So there's going to be, have to be a bedding in time, even if it was Alonso, it's still a bedding in time there. So yeah, I'll I, I, be for Almerin, Deserby probably second choice, and then whoever you got third, fourth, and fifth, basically. Are you not tempted by a, a, one of the German managers, Jamie, a Tuchel or an Argelsman? Do you not think that they're quite similar no, to how keep, keep, plays? Keep, no? keep, to, keep Tuchel away from my club, man. Keep, keep, okay. Keep, keep Tommy T away, man. Keep oh, Tommy why, is T that, why is that? Sorry? Tommy, is that? Tommy T is... Tommy, oh, just, Thomas Tuchel is a terrible manager. He's an overrated manager. And well, he why is he all of a sudden terrible? I don't get it. I'll tell I you don't, why. I don't rate him, man. Why? I don't rate him. Yeah, not rate him why, I can explain he's why. Terrible. I can explain why. I can explain why. There are managers around this world that are very good in cup games, in reading one-off games, right? He's brilliant. Champions League final with PSG, won the Champions League with Chelsea, two cup finals with Chelsea. He's very good in that. He proved it, right? I can't just knock him down. In the league, against people like Pep Guardiola and Arteta, especially in this near age, and even against someone like Xabi Alonso, who's doing it, and, and uh, uh, Simone Inzaghi at Inter, you need a manager with a specific style of play that will work against 15 to 17 teams out of the 19 teams you play. You need to stamp your authority in 17 games, which is what Pep Guardiola created. It's it's just the day and age. Thomas Tuchel might have been fantastic in the Ferguson era, right, in the Mourinho back in the days. It's a one game of you actually read every game different. Nowadays, you need a manager that will come in, 
you embed a style of play in the players. Every game is systematic. As we say, robotic. Thomas Tuchel doesn't do this. He didn't do it for Chelsea. If you ask me what was Chelsea style of play, it was just kind of different. Uh, if you ask me what he's done at Bayern Munich, it's the same. It's like he is. he has a very good idea of I can read this game and I can read that second game, but he doesn't have a style of play. So that's why I don't think he will win the league in 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 uh, in Germany. That's why I don't think he will win the league in England if he comes in. He might get you to a cup final, but I don't think he's the right guy to actually build. He's not the right guy to build a system for the players. So even when he leaves, the manager that can come in can follow the footsteps. That's my explanation of why I don't like Thomas Tuchel. Does that make sense, Cesar? No. Are you frozen? No, it is. You saying to me? I was just... I was wondering, you know, he's not my manager. <laughs> I'm going to die on a hill for him. It was a lot of people okay. want him at Chelsea, and I explained to them because no, he no, won no, the no, Champions no. League. People, you think he will take the club to the next level? The guy had no style at Chelsea. He was like, let's tighten the defense and hope for the best going forward. People and it worked in the Champions the League, but it didn't work otherwise. People forget towards the end, it was really bad. Like, yes, our downfall yes. happened when he was here, but people just don't. When we lost like three, no way to was it lead to sign. In the summer, that summer, and then we from then on in, we didn't win a game for ages. So yeah, it was absolutely I don't atrocious. Do you, do you know what's mad about Tuchel though? Now, although not a lot of people rate him, he will always get big jobs. Yeah, because, because, that, because he has this charisma, yeah. bro. He has this swagger yeah. about him. He yeah. comes across. I promise you, I swear to God, some managers just do this. He has this swagger about, and also the CV looks good. PSG, yeah. Chelsea, Champions League, coaching Bayern Munich now. They look at it as, like, listen, I'm, I'm like, this guy coached big clubs, big egos. Um, bro, I don't think he's a top coach at all. No, no, do I. No. I don't think he's a top coach at all. I know, like, the Chelsea, oh, my God. The Chelsea guys, like like Ziad, for example. Guys, make sure to subscribe to Ziad's zone. We do work together, Ziad on El Ahwa. Uh, he's like, every time I mention Thomas Tuchel, he thinks Thomas Tuchel is the Messiah. And I'm like... No, the guy is losing the league 10 points behind by Leverkusen. He has never won the league. No, it's, it's, it's yeah. crazy, bro. But anyway. he's still probably got better credentials than like Zerby. Deserbi. He does, of course. He won the Champions League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 100%. We'll Listen, people, uh, moving on to the big game. Listen, we have about 450 people here, and we aren't even on 200 likes. And I'm going to do the super chats, all of them in one lump. We're going to answer all of them. I can answer two of them because we are moving to the big game. But the first thing I want you to do now, close the live chat, please, and hit that like button. Get me to 200 likes in the next two minutes, people. Come on, don't be lazy and don't be greedy and don't be like, just come on, just hit the like button. It helps the channel move to the next viewer. Come on, we're providing you top content for free. Just come on, just do it now. Halftime looks bigger, priest. Supporting the channel, bigger priest. I if Arsenal beat City, do we win the league, Rory? Uh, yes, sure, maybe. I don't know. Just we could throw it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not a, I'm not a prophet. Um, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. why not? Jack Howe is saying, Nobbins, who would you take now as Pep replacement? If Pep leaves tomorrow, Nobbins, if Pep leaves at the end of the season, who would you take? Deserve it. Deserve Really? I, I, I love him, yeah. I think I think give him give him better tools, wow. I think he would build you a house. I agree with you, actually. I, I love this. I think he suits City. I, 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 I think he would, yeah. I, 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 I think I think it would work really well, to be honest. Again, actually, with better players, I think he'd I think he'd cook. That's what I well, that's what I keep telling people. I sit down on the terrace and people didn't like it. I told him that the guy. Because his style and how he coach, we think Lewis Dunk is this Van Dyke guy. We think Billy Gilmore is Jorginho. Do you know mm. what I mean? Because of the way they play, the way that they look on the eye, we think they're very good. He is making them look good because of his style. Imagine him having better defenders, better midfielders. People think Pascal Gross is a fantastic player. He's a good player, but he's making him look great. I actually believe that the Zerbi with better players will absolutely be fantastic. Will absolutely be very, very if, good. I, if I had to take a manager who's currently not got a job, uh, I'm, I still back Graham Potter. I don't care. 
kick him out of the stream. I love Potter. I don't <laughs> yeah. care. I love him. Kick, kick him Chel- Chelsea. You, you Chelsea. No, Ch- 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 Chelsea did him over, man. Give him his redemption arc at City. Come on. We actually did Zerbi prove that Grand Potter is not great. <laughs> or it's just... how, how so? By, by building on the good work that Potter did at Brighton. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I actually disagree. I, I disagree with everybody. This is English bias. I actually believe that when people say um, that the Zerbi built on Graham <laughs> Potter foundation, I actually believe that Zerbi has played this football with Sassolo. Uh, when he coached I'm, outside I'm not of just... Italy... I'm not disputing that, but Potter took Brighton from a a team which was threatened by relegation to like the the, the top eight, didn't he? Yeah, but I believe what the Zerbi proved is is better than Potter. Potter is okay. They couldn't score goals, bro. They couldn't score any goals. They were like passing the ball around, which looked all right. They pass it better now with the Zerbi. Their defense is a little bit more open, but they, they score more goals, they pass it more around, and they look better. And Potter, remember, Potter finished like, yes, in top of the table, but Potter still, I think he's an okay coach. I'm not saying Potter is a terrible coach. He's not Vincent Company, but he is an okay, an okay coach. He'd do well with England. I'd have Potter yeah, he might do England. well with England. He might do well I, with England. I, I'd, I'd sack Southgate and put Potter in charge now. Maybe. Anyway, listen, big game, Sunday. Can, can we just, first of all, ask the first question? And I'll ask Shez, actually. He's the one that's not in the race. Which result get any of them out of the title race? Or neither, or nothing. Or it or doesn't matter what happens, both stay in the title race for you, and they have a big chance still. I can give you the different outcomes. Yes, and why. please, I so, want that. Yeah, cool, I'll break it down. Everyone agrees with me. Interject if you want to, by the way. So I think if City win, it cements their title charge. I don't think it makes them win the league. I think, I think that's a fair point to say. If Arsenal win, I think that momentum and that mentality shift would help them become, in their eyes, the favourites and to most people, the favourites. To beat Man City at the Etihad, they haven't done that since Pep has arrived. So for them to do that this season, especially after last season's downfall, that would be a massive, what's it called, character arc, changing changing the guard sort of thing. I think if it's a draw, it's advantage Liverpool, but not by a lot. So a draw, yes, would help Liverpool in terms of points-wise, but Liverpool, in my opinion, have like a semi-hard running. So it's not like they can't drop points. I think if City were to lose, it would be very damaging. I'm not going to lie. I think at that point, it would be like the injuries, the loss, the fact Arsenal would now be above them as well, further above them. Liverpool would hopefully win their game. I think it's a must win for both sides. But I think if Arsenal were to win... It'll be a bigger life. That city is out of that. You think City are like four points behind both? They're so done. If Arsenal win, City's not out of it, but I don't think they'll win the league. But four points behind I, both, you think you can, you can catch them? Mentality wise, Mo. That's what I said. That's what I said when I said my speech. I said mentality wise, Arsenal would be like, we just beat the Etihad. We just got what a win off Liverpool and a draw off Liverpool. We drew against, we beat City twice. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So yeah. in there, anybody? Head, uh, like, yeah. We, we've done what we needed to do. So if we just beat these teams who aren't as good as City, by default, we'll win the league. So why can't they beat a Man United away if they beat City away? Mentality-wise. Not literally on not literally on the No, pitch, but I think on points, though, Shez. I think on po- four points, it's very hard to catch a... But for me, it's hard for me to say... Very hard, City it's would... harder even to catch two teams with four points ahead of you. No, 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 the, the, problem with, the problem with that is it's context, right? It's hard for yeah. me to say if City were to lose, they're out of it. Points wise, because they're not. But, yeah, yeah, I get saying, mathematically they aren't, but it would be logically. But, but, but I'm trying to say mathematically they aren't. In my head, and most people said it would be over because yeah. to lose at home to Arsenal after being the treble winners and doing what you've done, it'd say a lot about C. It, for me, it would say a lot about C. But I think if Arsenal were to lose, it would also say a lot about them because you've done all you needed to do. So I don't far think it season. says anything about Arsenal. I think and we'll come. To, we'll come to that. I don't, yeah, I don't like this notion. And I, I was on, on other channels, like now, like like three hours, right? And I'm not liking this. But I'm going to ask Nobbins if he agrees that if City are out of the title race, if they lose this game. You say, Is that what you think? I actually, yes, I agree. Four points. Yeah, I knew you four. that. It's we way, pushing. it's very <laughs> unlikely yes. for you to win the league with four points behind two teams. It's not yes. one. You're not catching one. Yes, You're... and it's not and it's not four points. It's actually five because of goal difference. Because our, ours is so much worse than Arsenal's, and it will be. 
by definition, two worse if we assume Liverpool beat Brighton and we lose to Arsenal, say 1 0, and then Liverpool play Sheffield United at home. So that's like 6 0, easy. And we've not beaten, we've not really pumped anyone this season. Uh, like we, we, I think, I don't, I don't know if we've beaten anyone by three goals in the Premier League this season. Maybe, maybe I'm misremembering. Um, yeah. So, so then the question you've got to ask Foden, if, if we. Foden yeah, th- 3 1, that was, yes. And it's not by three one. goals. Maybe there is one that I'm not re- remembering, but it doesn't feel like there has been that sort of season. Uh, so if that happens, so if we assume in this scenario City lose and Liverpool win, and therefore obviously Arsenal win, that means City are four points behind with nine games left, so really five points behind, assuming there's not a massive goal difference swing. So then the question you need to ask yourself is, will City, one, win nearly all their every single game, you know, nine games in a row? They can do it. But will both... Arsenal and Liverpool drop at least five points in that period of nine games. Oh, not one. Yeah, I they, exactly. Exactly. Will they both lose and draw, or will they both draw three times? Remembering that City, because people go back to, oh, in the, in the 11 12 season, we were eight points behind with eight games left. Yeah, but we played United, who, who were second that time. We're not going to have that six point swing game against Liverpool and Arsenal, and they're not going to play each other either. So it's not as, and also, you know, when it's, oh yeah, we were eight points behind Arsenal last season. Yeah, but again, we played them. So that that's a six point swing game. We don't have that. We're not going to have that same luxury after Sunday for either Liverpool or Arsenal. And it's a complication of it being a, a three horse title race for the first time in 10 years. Um, so for me, City lose, basically out of it. If Arsenal lose, I think they're basically out of it. Um yeah. Yeah, but it, it basically, yeah, because I'd say Arsenal have got a, maybe the trickiest run on paper. Yes, they would be, they, they, they would be, they they would then go, you know, four points behind Liverpool uh, with a harder run. Are they going to make up that difference? I, I don't think so. Conversely, if it's a draw, I think Liverpool probably win it. So I do think this, I do think this game is title defining. Really, mm, I think it is that important. Yeah, not not just from a points perspective, also from an intangible mentality perspective. Like if City win, it's like right. We're back. Let's click into gear. Da, 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 da. If Arsenal win, it's like right. We we've proven that we can beat City. Not not only at the Etihad, and you no, know, not only with Rodri, etc. Et you know, we don't have that inferiority complex anymore. We're just going to go from strength to strength. And then if it's a a draw again for the reasons I've outlined, I can't really see Liverpool dropping that many points. Yeah, Rory, what what do you say to the people that keep saying? Arsenal must win. Yeah, I don't get it. I, I saw Jamie Carragher said it's not a must win for City, but it is a must win for Arsenal. And that oh. I just do not understand. I'm like, right, yeah. so City, who are the team in third, not the team in first, who haven't beaten any of the top five this season, it's not a must win for them, but it is for Arsenal. I don't get it. Um, I don't get it. And I don't think it is a must win. I think it's a must not lose. I think for both teams, it's a, it's a must not lose rather than a must win. Um, I do think it's probably more important for City to win it than it is for us to win it. I think we'd definitely be happier with the draw than they would. And I keep saying, like, if we end this season having beaten Liverpool and City at home and having drawn against both of them away, none of us are going to look back at the game at the Etihad and go, oh, that's where we lost the league. Like, if we don't go on to win the league, it will be Fulham at home when we were 2-1 up against 10 men and then drew that game. Or West Ham at home that we lost. Like, drawing at the Etihad is fine. Um... And and actually, I guess I disagree with all of you in the sense that I don't think there's any result that defines anything. I don't think a loss for anyone rules them out completely. I I think it's it's nice to like build it up as that. It's nice to like build it up as this game that has such severe consequences. But there's still nine games to go after it, and all three teams this season I just don't think are so dominant that they're going to go and win the remaining nine. Um, people talk about, you know, Liverpool of 18, 19, I think it was that won nine in a row at the end of the season. Like, this isn't that Liverpool team. This isn't the City team of last season or seasons gone by. So I think I think it could go, you know, the, the result could go anyway. And after that, results could go anyway and it could swing another way. I think, um, yeah, I don't think there's so much drama, which I think maybe because I've convinced myself of that, maybe that's why I'm not so nervous about it but we'll see you're smiling do you, do, so, but do, do you Rory do you foresee Liverpool let's say, let's say they beat Brighton in the last nine games do you think they drop six points P- possibly maybe not six points I think 
I guess have, in, your, in your head, they'd need to drop six. I think maybe five. Like, I can see City turning the goal difference around. But, but yeah, I can see Liverpool. You know, I can see Liverpool, like, losing away at West Ham. And it would be a shock, but I could see it happening. Same away at Fulham. No guarantees. So, and again, I, you know, I could see I could see Arsenal beating City and then losing to, to Spurs. Like, God forbid. But it's just the way the season has gone. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to rule... Anything else? No, no I disagree. I don't know if Jamie wants to say anything, but let me disagree, disagree strongly with Rory while I'm here. I think to say that the notion of people saying to you you have to win this game is false. I think you're trying to deflect away pressure, in my opinion. So I'll tell you why I should win, win this game and why it's so important. The reason why you should be thinking to win this game and to go in there confident is because I've been hearing all season that this is facts, by the way. You have the best defense in the league. Your defense best attack in the league, you're the best depth in the league, you're the best up-and-coming manager in the league, you're, bet you're playing better than City, you're playing better than Liverpool, you're in the Champions League course final. So there is no better time for you to go to a team who's your direct rivals, cement their season into basically not winning the treble, you pushing yourself up for winning the game and going on to win the league. I don't see why me saying that has to come from a rival perspective. That's just being objective. This was Chelsea but, Football Club. I'll be saying the exact same thing. If you can rebuttal my point and say otherwise, that's fine. But in my opinion, when Chelsea beat, what year was it, Nobles? We beat you at home with Diego Costa and Hazard. Um, uh, I think that was the start of the 13 14 season. No, it was Hazard and Costa. And I don't oh, know the, well, the season you won the league? Yeah. yeah Mourinho. The season the league. 14 15. So when we beat, yeah. For, when, we, when we won that game, I already knew we were going to win the league. Because it was like, no, they won the league you don't 15, go to get that often and win. 16, 17, That's, yeah, 14, 15. Exactly, I knew what you were saying. We do, you don't go often to these stadiums and win the game. So that's my example as a team who's actually done it, beat City Eddie Etihad and won the league that season. I'm talking yeah. from experience. I'm yeah, not talking yeah, from like but... rival hate. That's, no, no, no. I hear it. I mean, first of all, I don't think Arsenal fans have been saying all season that we're the best and this, that and the other. I think the last few weeks we have statistically been performing at the highest level. But... Pep has never won at Anfield in the league, unless I'm mistaken. Klopp has never won at the Etihad in the league, unless I'm mistaken. So none, neither of those two managers have ever had to go away to the title rival and win. And I'm seeing it for the first time that it's Arsenal that have to go to the Etihad and win. Having beaten it's both because it's home. free. I think it's because it's a free horse race this time, it's ever two. I think that's why. Maybe, I, I agree with you, Roy. I do agree with you. One thing I will yeah. say about Everyone on about Liverpool's running, right? I will say one thing under Jurgen Klopp, even when Liverpool are at their worst, say last season, Liverpool always finished the league strong. You know, last season we finished the league pretty strong, as strong as we could anyway. The season when we had no, like no defenders, we won 10 out of our last 11. Liverpool do finish league strong. So I personally think the league is going to be won and lost for, for all three of us with our away games. So I fancy, like, I think Liverpool win most of their home games. Then three away games we got in eight days, the Fulham, Everton West and West Ham. I think that where is where Liverpool could win or lose uh, the Premier League because Liverpool come through them three. Because our next four games, three of them are at home. I mean, we've got Brighton and Southampton in our, uh, Brighton and Sheffield United, sorry, are our next two home games, are our next two Premier League games. And they're both at home Sunday and Thursday. You gotta feel as a Liverpool fan, we should win both of them games. Then we're away to Man United and then we're at home to Crystal Palace. So that's our next four Premier League games. So Liverpool should be looking at, at least ten points uh. I, I I like about this Arsenal must win thing, okay. Arsenal are inferior to City. Yes, they are ahead of them by one point. However, they still it's they still haven't played them at the Etihad. So for you to sit here and say, table do doesn't lie, table doesn't lie, I think rivals are doing this. Until Arsenal plays City away as well, that means now you both played equal. So if Arsenal come on top after the City game, now you can say Arsenal have had better better part of the season than Manchester City. Because Arsenal only played City at the Emirates. Number two, a lot of people... You the, the 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 people that Shez is talking about are actually Arsenal fans that we say they are deluded. 
But we take them to their word and we tell Arsenal fans, the other guys, you must win because these guys say you're the best team in the world. It's literally a cycle that goes this way. Some Arsenal fan oh, comes on Twitter. I'm, I'm telling you, and you know what I'm talking about, Chess. Some I'm Arsenal YouTube fan says yeah. we are the best team in the world and we have the best upcoming and the best coach in the world. And we tell them, well, hold your horses. You haven't won a thing. And then when comes the big game, we tell them, well, by the way, your your other fan, we tell someone like Rory, said that we're the best. you're the best team in the world, so you must win that game. Also, question then. Also, I'm gonna, then question. Let me just finish the last point. Oh, finish, finish it, yeah. We should be have the same energy for everybody, right? Nobody goes to the Bernabeu, nobody, and be favorites. Nobody goes to Anfield and be favorites. And at the current moment, nobody goes to the Emirates and be favorites. So why are we telling Arsenal you must if they are going to the Etihad to play away to a team that haven't lost a game at the Etihad since 2022? It's 2024. I the think actually why... we just want to put pressure. The reason why, I, I, so I think it's must win for both teams, but that's because in my head, I've I've got a timeline in my head of what's most likely to happen based on the outcome of it. So if I'm living in a world where I don't think Liverpool will drop as many points as Arsenal in the last nine games. And from my perspective, I do think it's a must win for Arsenal if they want to win the league. The fact is that the Etihad is irrelevant because that's the, that's the, that's the, in, in the, in the, it, it's irrelevant if the question is what has happened from now. There's no point talking about what happened, you know, earlier in the season when they lost against West Ham, for example at the Emirates. Yeah, that, that they shouldn't have dropped those three points, but they did. Thank it's, you, it's, 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 it's March now. So in, in the same way that when I uh, yeah, context is also different, like you know, before the Anfield game, uh, before City went to Anfield, uh, you know, like uh, the day of, I was like, right, a draw is fine. That's that's chill. But then I saw the lineup that Liverpool put out. I was like, right, well, it's a must win now. We, 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 can't, we can't afford to not win this game now. So, uh, in my, so in my opinion, in context, Matters and it's not as black and white and as just oh, wrong, right? Can I, can I pick you back what Nobbins Nobbins said, Nobbins, right? So you were, that, though, wrong, Nobbins. you were proven wrong, Nobbins, because Liverpool was a better team with an inferior lineup than their best lineup because I, they play at Anfield. I don't understand what you mean because I, I said it's a must win and I still think it was a must win and we didn't win. Okay, when you say to someone it's a must win, okay, let me just establish something. When that doesn't mean you someone, should win. Okay, if you say must win, if I'm telling Jamie, by the way, you must win this, if Jamie doesn't win it, it's a failure. Is that what you mean? What we mean by a must win? So if Arsenal don't win this game, it's a failure, right? No, but... They failed. It, 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 if, if, is... However, oh, they, aren't, they are going to this race, as I said that yesterday on my show with Sam and LB. In this game, if we think this game, this particular game in isolation is a race, who is the faster guy in this race? Is it Arsenal or Manchester City? But you put, can't, in all, uh, put in all the context into it, that City play at the Etihad. They haven't lost a game at the Etihad since 2002. Who but, is the faster the guy is, in this race? But the issue is you can't look at it in isolation. You've got, you've got to look ahead and go, right, what are the remaining fixtures? What's most likely to happen? And that's why, again, I think it's... I'm not just trying to put pressure on Arsenal. I'm putting pressure on my own team. I think that mo both sides needs to look to win this game need to look to try to win this game if they want to win the title i it's it would be very difficult for city and arsenal to win the league from that point if it ended in a draw because of the context of liverpool that's the that's but, the main reason but, maybe more so for city to be fair because of the goal just add on that point rory because you mug yeah, yeah, yeah go 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 nobbin just added to my point even more my point i'm trying to make is you said earlier if we beat City or draw against them, we'll look back at the Liverpool, the uh, Fulham game, West Ham game, and go, ah, oh, we could have better there. Liverpool was to win the league. That's my point. Based off what's happened so far, okay, losing to Fulham and West Ham back to back, you now have an opportunity to right those wrongs this weekend, okay? So if you were to draw this game or lose it and Liverpool were to win the league, yeah, you might have drew against City, yes, and beat them at home, but you didn't win the league. So then you're going to be sitting there going, okay, where do we, we didn't win the league? Cool. West Ham, Fulham, oh yeah, City, we didn't beat them. That counts. Just because it's City, the Etihad, doesn't mean it's not a game. Yes, your record there might be crap. I'm not saying you should go there and win outright in your favourites. What I'm trying to tell you is you need to win this game to win the league because of those mistakes you made beforehand. So to ignore it and go, oh, if we don't get a result, it's fine. 
because it's, if you don't win the league, it's very interesting to see what everyone says. Because they won't use this game as a Bromwell, so they'll use Fulham at home and West Ham because they're smaller teams. Team's a team. To win the league, you've got, you've got to win the most points. So you have an opportunity to beat your direct, direct rivals to win the league. Why can't I say you should be looking to win this game? I don't I get know, it. I hear it. I hear, well, we should look to win the game. But what I'm saying is if we draw, I don't think that's... A, I still think we can win the league if we draw. We'll be If you factor in goal difference, we'd effectively be one point behind Liverpool if we draw it. Well, at that point, then, unless Liverpool go win every game from now until the end of the season, he's upset. then we, we... Yeah, he's gone. We've got the chance to... Uh, then we've got the chance to pull it back. And then I don't understand what this must... What does must win mean? Because, Nobbins, you said when the Liverpool lineup came out, you decided that was a must win. But you didn't win, and you're still in a position where you can win the title. So... It wasn't a must win, but, but it, in in a very in a very tenuous position though. Yeah, you but... are in a tenuous position now. Of course we are because we're not we're not in charge of our own destiny. Yeah, but so effectively then, so what we're saying is every game for all of us from now until the end of the season is must win. So there's no point in having a must win. We just go all right. Every game we all play is must win because if we don't win it, we're not going to win the league until another side slips up. Yes, I think yeah. that's correct. Why wouldn't that be true? No, no, that's fine. If we're settled yeah, yeah. on that, that's fine. But then, yeah. be, you know, we don't have because to have a half-hour debate every margins, week about whether it's a must-win. I would agree with everything you're saying if it was two teams. Because there's three teams, right? And you, um, they play each other, you two, Norbert and Rory. Because it's three teams, each point literally matters even more. Do you know what I'm trying to say? If last season it mattered more compared to Liverpool seasons or whatever, this season matters the most. Because if you mess up, Liverpool can capitalise and vice versa. So for me... This conversation will change every week, literally. It could be Liverpool favourites, they might lose against Brighton, you might beat City, now your favourites by this many points. Now you can't drop points to Tottenham, Man United away and Chelsea at home. And if you do, that could be your tie rover. So that's what I'm saying is a must win from the perspective of if you're in a race and you're joint, every margin, sip of water, it was in the trains you wear makes a difference, right? Because they're small margins. So... Tarun, yeah. Tarun here is saying, given how all three teams are playing and how close it is, by the way, the three uh, between the, t- the three teams, every game is a must win for all three. We cannot say one is more than the other. Yeah, that's, yeah, that, that, that's, 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 right. that's correct, yes. I don't think we I disagree. Football. I love football discourse. We just spent half an hour establishing we all need to win our games. Good. It's absolutely ridiculous, to be honest. It's crunch time in the Premier League. It, it, every single slight step matters from this point, and you can't afford to slip up, or you'll be left behind in the in the dust. Do you well, think actually, a draw is? Would you agree a draw is worse for City than it is for Arsenal? Yeah, definitely, because yeah. you've got better goal difference. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I still well, think I, if we draw, Liverpool win. I heard this argument, and I'm glad Chess is here. I had this 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 discussion the other day, and. Um, now, before we go down, she has to, what's your prediction for the game then? Who you say, if you have your cousin is betting, okay, I'm not promoting betting. If you have your cousin that has yeah, $100, no, yeah. right? And you, he's asking you, which team should I put the £100 on? Which, which one did you tell him? Why do I have to go first? I, 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 because I, I got another question after this, after your answer. Uh, I'm gonna go Arsenal. Wow, he's backing himself. Arsenal to win at the Etihad and men's Arsenal to be the first team. People in the chat have 600 people. I want you now to tell me who's gonna win the game. No scores, nothing. Who's gonna win the game or a draw? You tap one so name. You're all your money has to be placed on red or blue. One, yeah. Red or blue. Yeah, red red. Or blue. Red. All right then. All right. Consistency is key. So, I, mean, I know you thought I about it, and you, know the second, you know the questions that is coming. Of course, that's why I had to get ahead of you. See, that's <laughs> not checkers. I want to no actually move to... the conversation a little bit about the managers, the three managers. So I heard this the other day that it's a failure if Arteta or Klopp don't win the league, but it's not a failure for City if you don't win the league. <sighs> and it was absolutely shocking to hear that. Who said? And this? the argument is, I can actually can't remember. And the argument, Vater. And no we, changed, we discussed it, right? We discussed it. He actually changed his mind at the end. But after he said, because we won so many trophies and we won the triple, yeah, it's all right. And I told him, yes, you can afford to go. Nobody's going to say pep out. 
but it doesn't mean that yeah, Arteta and Jurgen Klopp, you might say they need to win it more. But come yeah. on, like, are we saying if Jurgen Klopp don't win this league, how do you assess his tenure? At uh, how, do I, how do I assess his tenure? Um, and not from oof. a Liverpool point of view, not from the Liverpool point of view that you haven't won in 30 years because everything after that will be success. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I think I look at it like this. So from a Liverpool point of view, when I look at Klopp, I look at him as our modern day Bill Shankly. Now, Bill Shankly weren't our most successful Liverpool manager, trophy wise, but he's arguably our greatest ever Liverpool manager because where he brought us back from. Klopp, pretty much in this modern day for us, brought Liverpool back from a a place where Liverpool weren't, they were doing okay, but it weren't great. And he brought us back into a place where, you know, we would compete for Premier Leagues, Champions Leagues, European finals and stuff like that. I think, what, four out of five European finals in the last six years or something mad like that. You know, we, we get to the, and so I think he'll go down like that. He's not going to be the most successful Liverpool manager, but he could be Liverpool's modern day Bill Shankly. That's how I look at it, where he set the foundations for managers to come after him to be more successful. That's my opinion on it. I'm going to challenge you, Jamie. Challenge could, away. Could one argue that actually the person who actually laid those foundations was Michael Edwards? Yeah, Klopp, for example, didn't want Mo Salah, who has gone on to be what, like your greatest player post. He, I'm going to say, well, say it right now. All right, he's Liverpool's greatest ever Premier League player. Oh, okay, yeah, y y your words then. Yeah, so could oh, one sorry, could one attribute that those foundations to Edwards rather than Klopp? Because when we talk about Liverpool, we talk about obviously you know the really good transfer uh, uh work you know bringing a salad for relatively cheap etc you know uh coutinho gets you alice and van dyke etc etc to the as i i don't claim to be well versed in this but as i understand it that was all essentially michael edwards is doing you can feel free to correct me if i'm wrong so it's could so one argue that actually if if we're talking about you know the context of liverpool success is that and like the net transfer spend and the the could I could I actually say, well, I actually think Edwards has been more important than Klopp in this sort of decade or so. Edwards has been amazing for Liverpool when he was sporting director. But Edwards got the right players in and was non-emotional about it as well, which I like about him. He's got like he's ice cold, he's got no emotion. He got the correct players in, and then you got a world class manager in Jurgen Klopp to coach him to the best of his ability. You know, because you've seen it other clubs where a sporting director can get players in but the coach ain't good enough to get the players where they need to be sort of thing it was a marriage made in heaven basically the 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 situation at liverpool at that time so i think it all works together and that's how football in today should work you know the sporting director does everything behind the scenes gets the players in then you get a world-class coach world-class manager to make them players even better than they actually are to take them take their game further and that's the whole point of it, in my opinion. So, as a partnership, they will both be remembered, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, so, Arteta Threshold, Nilot Pal. Thank you, Nilot Pal, for supporting the channel. Hello, Mom. Here you go again. But I have seen the light. You are the just judge. I try. I have agendas. Tons of them. Thank you, <laughs> Nilot Pal, for supporting the channel. Tons of them. A lot. A lot. But... Uh, can, I, sorry, can, I, can I ask Jamie one more question on clock? Because I, no, I want to can. want to keep stirring because I'm a naughty Third boy. Um, <laughs> so again, so just, just because I'm not saying you do this, James, because I don't actually know your thoughts on this, but I know many Liverpool fans who do who do think this. So, for, so uh, I, I'm going to see how far I can go with this. So, is for you is Allison the greatest Premier League goalkeeper, for example? What in Premier League history? Yeah. No. Okay, he's Liverpool. He's Liverpool's greatest goalkeeper, though. Okay, oh, but, okay. Has he has he been the greatest goalkeeper since Allison joins? Then in the period since he's joined, has he been the best in the Premier League? Since Allison's been in the Premier League, he's been the best goalkeeper. Okay. In the league, in How about opinion. Trent? Has he has he been the best fullback? Oh shit! Hey, I know what you're doing. I know. What you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Trent has been. Trent has revolutionised what a right back is. Mm, I, I totally agree. Yeah. Has Van Dyke uh, been the best defender? 
Van Dijk's been the best defender since he joined Liverpool. Has Salah been the best winger? For goals, yeah. Would you suggest that a supporting cast of Robertson, Mane, uh, Wijnaldum is a pretty excellent one? Tremendous. Has? And it's all ball. Go, 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 <laughs> has, with all that in mind then, has Jurgen Klopp, assuming he doesn't win the lead title this season, has he underperformed in your eyes if we're saying that he's got potentially four all-timers in that squad with that fantastic supporting cast? Yes, but I think he's had a bit of bad luck as well because he went after arguably the greatest manager of all time, Pep Guardiola, at this amazing Man City team. So, I like if I told somebody that my your manager got 97 points one season, but he didn't win the league, you wouldn't believe it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. You got 92 points and you didn't win the league, you wouldn't believe it. And that's what well, happened it happened before. in Spain when Pep Guardiola was there as well. So. Yeah, that's so, what I'm so saying. In, and it's, there are it's, the, uh, it's, it's a, this, this, And actually, Chelsea got 93 points to win the league before. So and it, not even that. We beat this best City team in the Champions League final, by the way, that we weren't yeah, expected to win. Exactly. So, like, all this narrative, oh, we were one point behind you lost. No, no, no. What I'm saying, yeah, we lost. But what you're saying, I'm what I'm saying is you're like going up. I'm not trying to you're going up. You're going up against a arguably the best manager and one. Of yeah, the but best still, like you just said, you four all timers. So what are we doing? I didn't say it was all timers. I didn't say anything. You just said so Jamie didn't Van Dyke, so. Allison, I didn't say and Salah. Yeah, but I'm not neutrals. Will even say Van Dyke's probably going to be. No, I never said they're not. I'm saying how can you have four all timers <laughs> and excellent so, supporting cast? But I also said I also said Klopp has underachieved as well. Is he unlucky or underachieved? Can someone tell me? He's not unlucky. Rory. I think he's underachieved. Not yeah. unlucky. But, wait, it's like, Three Champions it's, League finals. His best player gets injured and he loses the Champions League final because Mohamed Salah, who had an absolutely amazing season, Sergio Ramos done in dirty. Second one, he loses by one goal. And the league, he loses two leagues by one point. You don't think that's kind of luck? There's, there's elements of bad luck about it, but I also think City have probably had elements of bad luck along the way that you don't remember as being bad luck because they went on to win it anyway. So I think there's... Uh, I think there's a, he's, he's both been unlucky and underachieved in equal yeah. measure. I agree. Mm, I, I think, believe... When, if, go ahead, Norman. I was just saying, I think that obviously it, it's right to talk about, you know, the, the seasons where he lost it by one point. And I think obviously a degree of luck coming up against Pep, etc., well, uh, th there were there was also a season where he finished fifth, and there was this behind, and there was a season when he finished uh, fourth behind. No, 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 like, like fourth, fifth. W w a, a, a behind a United side, which we all condemned as being really bad. So uh, obviously, okay. like, like twice so, he finished behind Man United twice. Man United yeah, finished second so, under Oli, actually three times. Yeah, he finished one under Mourinho. Right? Am, am I mistaken? He finished second behind Mourinho. Yeah, he finished. He finished and behind, he fin behind Mourinho, uh, behind Oli, well. and behind Ten Hag. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I actually didn't realize. That's, on, that's not. That's not unlucky, is it? That's a trend. That's, 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 that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. He has underachieved and been unlucky. It's, uh, it's both. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Do you know what it is? Jamie's reasonable, Kyle. I'm shooting to him for time. He's reasonable. He'll say how it is. But the problem is, a lot of Liverpool fans can't take off their red tinted glasses when you ask the same question, right? So they'll start talking about, yeah, but before Klopp came, you had all that garbage and like, what's it called? Like, uh, emotional talk and rubbish, right? Oh, we haven't won a league before Klopp came. And for us, he's our best manager. And for me, we're talking objectively, he's underachieved because you can't have four pillars and not only win one Premier League. No, I agree. I argue with my own fan base about this sometimes. Yeah, if no, you're go, fair, Jim. You're fair. If yeah. we go, we've got the best goalkeeper in the world, we've got the best centre-back in the world, we've got the best right-back in the world, we've got the best right-winger in the world, you know, and we've got these... Firmino really was the best first nine in the world. Yeah, and we've got... And these for really, years, by the way, and not Marne, only like for one or two years. And Marne, Marne Robertson, yeah. Marne at the time. A lot of people wanted thing, Marne to win Ballon d'Or when he won uh, Mar AFCON. And Marne at left wing in his peak at Liverpool was arguably no one's hardly better than him in that position that time so if we're saying this and we're not picking up the trophies which look i argue on my own channel with my own fans about it but that's my thoughts and yeah we've underachieved you know the time. but then the, but then and the alternative but then the alternative yeah. to that where you can is you say well but would Mane have been that level of player if he wasn't playing under club like would trent have been that level of player if he wasn't playing under club so it's not like they were 
established elite level players before yeah, Klopp. He made them. He made them. That's exactly. The That's the same for Pep Guardiola. Them. Would Bernardo Silva reach the side? Would Kevin De Bruyne reach the side? Would Foden be the yeah, side? Yeah, but uh, it's the same. It's the same argument. Would Diaz? Would Diaz be even talked about the best defender in the league at one point if it was not for Pep Guardiola's system? Edison, who Pep Guardiola with his system hides his biggest flaws and really highlight his, his best ability, which is playing on the ball, yeah, right? You've got Fabian Delph, a left back. Fabian. Oh, that's a centurion, my exactly, boy. Exactly. Yes. You can't yeah, yeah, come on. And Liverpool have done the same under Klopp with certain players. Yeah, where <laughs> but that's how good in. both managers look are. At, yeah, but look at what Taro Endu, for instance, yeah. He's coming at this moment in time. Would he be like this under any other manager? Would Klopp get, you know, would they get that out of him? You, you know, and be... You know, he's never lost playing starting for Liverpool in the Premier League. I just I, I, I just look at it and think Klopp is like Pep, they're extremely good at coaching players that might not be should be at that level. Look at Jordan Henderson. Look what Klopp got out of Jordan Henderson. Do you know how mm. mad that is? Do you know <laughs> and, you know that's 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 what Klopp will be remembered from from our point of view. Look, I don't really care what everyone thinks, you know. In the world scheme of it, thinks about other my think. team because it's my team. You know, I I could say what I want about my team because it's my team. If anyone else wants to say different things, that's up to them. But there is, you know, you can have a, an argument about it that Klopp maybe should have won a tiny little bit more than he has. And so I don't got, think that's a disrespectful thing to say. Personally. If we're saying that you're looking Klopp under a cheat, that means easy to replace him then. That's what we're saying. That's easy just, to replace. Of course that's it is, the conclusion from this. That's the conclusion from this panel, that it's easy to, to replace him <laughs> since he under a cheat. You, you talk about Arteta, me. though. For the last, talk about Arteta. Threshold talk. Since this is before the big game, we like to put pressure on Arsenal even more. <laughs> that's what we do here. When is the threshold? For Arteta, when does it stop? When does he have to deliver? This season. We had okay. The reason why I want to ask this today because I had a, a show yesterday with Nobin, with uh, LB, sorry, and uh, Hossam, and we got accused that we discussed Arteta, but we didn't have an Arsenal rip. Like, and I thought we didn't say anything outrageous. So when is the threshold? Like, is it this season? Is it next season? Why always the question people ask me? Because I got accused in multiple comments yesterday after my video that I was unfair because I didn't have an Arsenal fan. Here we go. One of the best Arsenal fans out there, Rory, to yeah. talk about. Thank you. Uh, next season. Next season. And the reason is, is that you, if you ask the exact same people that would say, oh, he has to win it this season, uh, ask them to rank their top five Premier League managers of all time. And they'll all put Klopp and Guardiola above even Arsene Wenger, right? Most of them will. So you're going, okay, so Arteta in his first managerial job, and people don't like it when you say that as if it's a lie, but it is his first managerial job. They think that he should either win the Champions League at the first time of asking, the first time Arsenal have been in it for eight years, or win the Premier League against two of the top four Premier League managers of all time. And he's got to do it with a team that Arsenal fans massively overhype because none of them are actually that good, and we overhype our players massively and they pale in comparison to the world-class players at City and Liverpool. So, if you put all of that together, then I don't think you can expect them to win something this year. Um, if he doesn't win something by the end of next season, then you have to start looking at it and go, OK, for three years you were competing at the top of the Premier League and you didn't win it. That starts becoming a problem. But, yeah, for it what to be makes, this season... What makes mental. three years the right answer? Why not two? Um, well, I just explained why two... I just explained why two isn't the right answer. Because he's I, going against I, two managers. But next season, he's going to be going against Pep. Yeah, but that would, that's just Pep at that point. And, but do, and do you want me got... to present the other argument for you? I feel free. Feel free. Okay. So the other argument would be, I'm, I'm telling you why people next year will can have an argument as like, well, maybe the year after, right? Because next season, the talk will be, well, Pep was last season in a transition. Now, this season is more established with the Gavardios, the Dokus, the Nunes, and all the stuff. So, Pep will be stronger. So, you guys want Arteta to win against the, arguably the best manager after he established his second team with the third team in the Premier League. That, that would be the argument for yeah, some Arsenal that, fans. He will tell me, yeah. well, do you want him to win now? How do you want him? To, how do you say that a failure 
But, but Pep Guardiola and Pep Guardiola will invest more this summer. Pep Guardiola will sign Paqueta. Pep Guardiola might sign another uh, uh, winger. Pep Guardiola might sign another defender. So that's sure. The they, 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 other Arsenal fans might have that argument next season, and they'd be perfectly entitled to it if they wanted to. For me, next season would be the season where you go, okay, you've now got an established squad. A lot of your your high end players are entering their prime. Um, there just isn't an excuse not to not to go for the league or the Champions League or at least an FA Cup or, or Carabao Cup. I think the big difference is the next season we should be competing in all four competitions, which we haven't done for the last couple of seasons. I've got a question. Like yeah. a lot of people will see it that Arsenal spent a lot of money in the last couple of years, yeah. And if you don't win anything this year, that'd be another trophyless season for Arsenal. But then you can look at Man United, who are not as good as Arsenal, could possibly win the main FA Cup this season and won the League Cup the season before. So is there a time when you've got, you've got to say to yourself, like, next year is not a guarantee either, and you've got to try and win things when you're in it? I look at this Arsenal team, and I think they've got such a good squad. You know, young players coming through. There's no guarantee these young players are just going to keep getting better and better because young players can peak at an age as well, and they don't become as good as you think they can be. You know, it, it, the Cups for me, obviously, are always a lottery because it depends on the teams you're getting around. But, you know, Champions League against Bayern is not a foregone conclusion, even though Bayern are not as good this year. It's still a difficult game. And obviously, the Premier League's not a foregone conclusion either. Next year, obviously, no Klopp in the league. But we don't know how Liverpool are going to be next year. Not even I know. because No one, no one does. City, you get, like Mo just said, you go have... You, you gotta feel like Pep's gonna get other players in, probably a Pakatar from uh, West Ham this time around, come into that midfield, make that even better. You just feel like Arsenal. You feel a bit like maybe we should have gone a bit more in the domestic cups this season and try to win one of them as well, just to give Arteta a trophy. So he's got something to mount on that as well. I know he won the FA Cup when he first came in, but for this squad I mean, right now, for the last two years. I mean, that's the thing, right? He won the FA Cup when he first came in. We finished eighth that season. There's not a single Arsenal fan alive that would tell you they preferred that season to this season or last season. Um, you know, we've won numerous FA Cups in the last decade and they weren't enjoyable seasons particularly. So definitely don't prioritise them over competing at the top in, in the Champions League and the Premier League. And the thing is, this season, like, in fact, the last couple of seasons, last season we lost in the FA Cup to City and this season we lost in it to Liverpool early on in the competition. I'm like, that's kind of just... That's unfortunate that you've drawn those two early in the competition in a couple of consecutive seasons. The the Carabao Cup, I mean, I, I really could take it or leave it. I will never pretend to care about that competition, even if we do win it. So I, I think we should compete in all four next season. I think this season was the... And that's another reason I think we have to try and win something next season is this is the final season where I can honestly say this is still a part of the long-term transition in terms of players like Cedric and El Elneny are still fixtures on our bench. That's... You don't see that at, at Man City, right? It's, it's, it just doesn't happen. So after this summer, we should be at the point where the depth of our squad throughout is at a level that we should be competing. I get else want to chime in? I just feel like if you're going for a league title, every time Liverpool's gone for a league title with City and they've not won it, they've still won something that season. And I think that's sort of important. I, I, that's just that's just me. I, yeah, I, I agree. I, I actually don't yeah. think that's that next... important at all. Well, oh, I FA, think trophies are important. I think, tro uh, but I, I don't think the trophy. cups are enough. Let me just put it this way: the cups are not enough. No, but I'll still go the next five years winning one FA Cup or a Carabao Cup every year. That doesn't justify him staying at the job. Five yeah, years. I'm telling you, five yeah, years. No, that's happening. But that that's a different conversation though, because that's then the conversation would be to worry. Do you want to push on? He would say yes. Then you get rid of him because he's not done. What you'd expect is the Premier League, Champions League, but Jamie's point is correct. Where it's like they're pushing it back this year because you said something about top five, you wouldn't include him in there. So how do you expect them to win? But then Mo said if they spend loads of good money in the summer, they could win the next league and the next league. Then when do you keep moving the bar? Right, Champions League can get harder next season, for example. You don't know that. So Jamie's right in terms of these cups might not be what you want, but they're trophies and they can show you can win and get over the line consistently. 
right? But, so, but I don't know if they, I don't know if they does does last year. Does it doesn't mean. Ten by the way, it doesn't mean Ten Hag's Carabao Cup doesn't mean he's a manager that can get over the line. It but he's not in the same position as Arteta. That's the point. He he's in the way different position where he's just come in. Yes, he's had a lot of money to spend. But he's just come in the job and he could win two trophies in a row. Well, Arteta's been here for coming up to is it five six years, right? Four. And he's only won one FA Cup at the very beginning. So the context is different. But at the end of the day, football's about winning. So the context kind of goes out the window. And also, with the question posed, I think Arsenal fans that disagree with Rory would say, I'm looking at Arsenal from an Arsenal perspective, not Arteta perspective. They just want to see their team win. They don't really care who the manager is. So if you ask someone who doesn't care who the manager is, they'd probably say this season because they want to see their team win. So that's probably the counter-argument, right? Whereas more people sympathetic towards Arteta so they'll give Arteta more time. Do you get what I'm trying to say? I think, I, hear it. I think there's a difference. But yeah, it depends where you want to sit, really. It's not my club, so... But yeah. <laughs> yeah Nobbins, you want to chime in before we... Uh, I, I think that... Um, I like Arteta. Uh, I like him to be a future City manager. I don't think it'll happen, but I like him a lot. Um... Rory's face and when I said that. Don't worry. He's, I'm sure he's not gonna leave. I'm just saying I'm just saying that's what I would like, because I like him. Um yeah, I have some sympathy with what you said, Mo, about in my head, City are going to be a lot stronger next season. That's that's a very easy thing to say, but I just suspect we're going to have quite a good transfer window. We haven't had a a, a, a like a big transfer window since like 1718. In terms of what in, 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 in no in, in respect of like starters certainly spent in amount of in terms of money spent sure but in terms of like actual sort of like you know three or four players who's like yeah that they're, they're like they're like in the first team we haven't really done that since 2018 sorry since the 17 18 season um we've either signed like one or two max but for the most part it's been sort of like squad players or projects whatever allegedly that's what we're going to be looking to do this summer um and i, I think that's what the squad needs as well so I would predict that City will be a lot better next season. I don't know what Arsenal's financial situation is because I know they spent a lot recently. I, I, I honestly, I don't know how much more they can spend. Um, but if I'm to assume that City are better next season, then I think that Arsenal will need a, a couple more strong starters. I just don't know if that's going to come in the summer. I, I don't know enough about Arsenal's si situation. So yeah, so I do think it's almost like you've got to sort of strike while the iron's hot in a way. Because uh, again, you know, you touched on it. City in a sort of weird. City have had a weird season. I think it's mainly down to Pep. Um, I just question will Pep out. Pep out. No, no, no. <laughs> I just question whether, whether will he be making these same mistakes next season? Will he have the same squad next season, uh, which is cl clearly flawed in his eyes for what one way or another? Because he keeps playing plays in weird positions. I don't know if I see that happening. So I'm not saying Arsenal. I'm not saying Arteta must win now or sack him. I'm just trying to add to the context of if he doesn't win it this, let's say this season, again, in my head, City will be a lot stronger next season and therefore it will be a trickier task. Yeah. That's my sort of thoughts on that. Uh, just uh, Micah here is saying Klopp seven trophies in nine years with two more to play for Wenger with 10 in 22 years. Klopp is clear. I, mm. Mm. Maybe. I actually think actually Wenger is ahead of Jurgen Klopp, to be honest with you, uh, in the ranking, in my well, opinion. If Klopp, if Klopp wins the Premier League and Europa League this year, that's two European trophies and two Premier League trophies. Yeah. What, what does that put him? Does that put him above Wenger then? Yes. If he yeah, wins the Premier League this good. season, it's above Wenger already. Done for me. It's over. I'd agree with that. For me, it's... Probably. it's if he wins the league this season. Uh, Mo, would you take Klopp at Inter next season? Not to replace Inzaghi. No. No. Whoa. Not to replace Inzaghi. I don't know why. He, uh, like you just had all the talk about him underachieving and then you're asking, and then you're... Uh, and then no, you're, no, I like Inzaghi. I, I don't understand I why... Li to replace Inzaghi now. I don't, I don't understand why Liverpool haven't got Inzaghi on their shortlist. That's what I'm saying. He's a good manager. I don't know. If we I love Italian out, manager. Give is us this, is this, this from Kunli, is this something that we can entertain? No, because Arsenal fans mm. say they've got the best squad in if the league. If Arteta wins the league this year, and again, it's two of the best in the managers, it will be one of the greatest achievements in Prem history. Can we agree? I no, rate the team, agree. though. I but we don't agree. Good. But we don't agree. 
The well, reason why we're going to get one of the best achievements in the Premier League history is Mourinho coming to the Premier League from Porto, right? And dominating Wenger and uh, oh yeah, that that's number one for me. Yeah, yeah number one, Ranieri. Oh, Ranieri. Yeah, it's yeah, the best. I think it's the best underdog story in the history of football, in my opinion. Billy Collins saying, "No, oh, yeah, we answered this. I actually listen, people. Next time we'll discuss when Saka should leave to go to Manchester City. Uh, what is the threshold for that? This is the agenda <laughs> that is now, of course." Uh, We'll discuss this next time. But listen, people, a couple of things I want to tell you. We got over 600 people here still, and we aren't even on 300 likes. That's absolutely embarrassing for all of you people. We need 300 likes now in the next one minute. And also, this will take you to Rory Talks Football, where he has his own stream. Of course, all the stream is going to be about Arsenal and Manchester City. We're all supporting Rory Talks Football, of course. He's trying to build his channel on YouTube. Great content. He's trying to go daily now. So you got to support the channel, subscribe. And also Jamie Phillips is in the description, of course. Jamie Talks Football. And Nobbins, the tactical genius of YouTube, of the city people, of course, doing live shows now. It's not only videos. It's not only watch-alongs, right? And also, I want you all to set your notification for El Ahwa today. Right? El Ahwa, 9 p.m. UK time. It's going to be an epic episode. Today for Al Ahwa, today myself, Osam, Hamza, Jacob, and the rest of the crew, Saad, and of course, uh, Ziad. Of course, that would be absolutely massive uh, show, of course, tonight. So, plenty of entertainment coming your way from Rory, Nobin, Jamie, and Al Ahwa later. I don't know if Shaz has a channel, he doesn't. Soon he will have one, of course. And um, of course, on Sunday, we'll do uh, the, uh, the reaction for the games. And on Monday, Rory is going to be joined. Joining Nobbins and Tom on Monday to reflect on the game, right? There is another yes. super chat that came through, right? And I got a surprise for you Tuesday to replace Rory because he wouldn't come on the channel two, two days in a row unless he wants to. That's a different story. Micah <laughs> saying, Nobbins, I'm hearing Big Window, uh, Frankie De Young, Paqueta and Mozial. I'm hearing Kimmich as well. And then comes Arsenal fans telling me we're going to win the league against Paqueta, Frankie De Young, Kimmich. <laughs> And Musiala, we'll see. But listen, people, this will absolutely take you to Rory. Stay here. Don't go anywhere and go like the video on Rory. At least go there and we'll out of here, people. Thank you so much.